Great. Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming. Uh, this is the Monday, March 25th, 2024 meeting of the Northampton Historical Commission. Um, there is a Zoom option that's being provided for viewing, virtual option. However, um, the comments via the virtual option are limited to the public comment period session only. But just a caution about that. And is Lori going to be, is Lori giving a presentation later on? Okay, All right. So you're kind of accepted, Lori, a little bit. <laughs> okay, great. So I will begin the meeting by um, talk to asking if there is any person in the, either this audience or the virtual audience who has any public comments that they would like to make uh, that are about items that are not already on the agenda. And there's nothing, no one here who's signaling, another one online. So we will go right into the next item, which is a short chair's report. And I do have um, a, just a couple brief items that I wanted to uh, share with everyone. Um, first of all, um, you may, and I don't, I wasn't at the last meeting, so uh, excuse me if this, these uh, things were discussed briefly. But um, as all of you know, there was a, um, a legal uh, claim brought against the city by the Catholic Church about the St. Mary's windows. And um, the uh, Historical Commission, um, Building Commissioner, Commissioner's Office and the Mayor's Office were, were representatives from them were uh, cited in that. Um, that was resolved and you probably saw that or may have seen that in the paper. So we have um, moved past that, I guess. Um, I would say that resolution doesn't seem to be quite in the city's favor. And I don't know, Sarah, if you want to say a few words about that to everybody, because I think it's important to know for the district. Sure. Uh, so essentially, the, the judge decided that the windows that were to be removed were sacred and that the city, and, and also interior, which was curious, but um, the city didn't have any review authority over those. But they didn't take all of the windows out. It was limited to the windows on the sides, as well as the uh, clearly religious windows above the altar in the rear of the structure. But now in private hands, and uh, owners starting to do due diligence on moving forward, and hopefully we'll see some use of that site soon. Great. And because that building is in the historic district, we would be reviewing changes to that. Correct. Um, from the exterior. So that would be kind of an so any new structure being proposed on the site and any exterior changes to the order of the building in the park, including removal and other than that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we had a back and forth today about the purview of historical commission versus the historic district commission related to demolition, but we don't need to get into that here tonight. Okay. Can I ask a question before you of course. go on? And that is, I was wondering, because I was surprised to see this uh, suit being brought, um, and I feel like this never came to the historical commission. So when there was this cease and desist order, why didn't it then come to us to rule on it or because it was already a suit in court? Yeah, so the um, the diocese was clear in their opinion that they did not just, did not need to speak to the historical commission. So that's what the suit was about. Um, so see, uh, cease and desist and the stop work order issued uh, one of the remedies at that point would have been for the diocese to then apply for a local historic district yeah. permit, but they declined to do that for the So one thing that um, just we don't need to belabor this now, and we'll maybe talk about it at the end, was just this issue of interior windows, um, because a window um, like that to me, and that window and that door is an interior window, but if the window is on the the outside wall of the building, whether it's View from the inside or the outside is still a window, um, but I don't know that that's been determined by anybody. So that's something that we may want to think about, um, especially in relation to our historic district guidelines, because um, it's not clear. So uh, that will be uh, something possibly to talk about later. Okay, um, as you all know, and we are going to be hearing an update on one of them tonight. Oh no, we're not. Sorry. As you all know, there are two applications in front of the um, historic, the Community Preservation Committee right now that are related to historic preservation. Um, one is the exterior um, 
upgrades, improvements, uh, stabilization of Memorial Hall, and the other is um, some investigations uh, of the historic a historic Northampton on um, the Parsons House and the Shepherd House. And those are both under review right now. The commission, uh, the committee is meeting um, next week to hear public comment and then two weeks after that, we'll make a decision about it. So we, we have a lot of funding applications this round. So we have to be very uh, careful about our decisions. And many of the applications may get moved to another. Um, okay, and as we were just mentioning, uh, we do have another commission member coming on, um, hopefully maybe the next meeting. Uh, his name is Michael Curtin. He has not been um, sworn in yet, but he was uh, he's the subcommittee on appointees. Is that right, Sarah? Well, I'm probably using the right name, wrong name. Uh, <laughs> There's uh, two city council committees with the with similar names, I can't yeah. remember the one no, that reviews right. that, but uh, he was confirmed by city council. Okay, great. Right. So it has not been. Um, so that's just, just to say hello. Hi, I'm here. Michael. Hello. Nice to see you. Yeah. Nice to see you. Yeah, I um, I attended the last meeting and I was a virtual attendee at the one before that. So I've been following things all along. Um, word is that it the city council has approved the mayor's appointment, and I'm waiting to hear the next step. So that yeah, the um, the, the city clerk will swear you in. That's I think pretty much ha what happens. We've all went through that process. Do you just want to say a few words about yourself since you're here? And uh, okay, um, I, read your, I read your email with all of your uh, qualifications, but why don't you share that with the commission members? Okay, uh, actually, maybe I could do that at the next meeting. Okay, sure. All right. That, yeah, I think that'd be better. I, you know, it's um, thinking about what, how I would encapsulate it so we don't drag on would is the issue. Okay. Right. Well, so now you're on the spot for doing your homework. Yeah, doing my homework, okay. keeping it brief. Yes, and lively. On the agenda for the next. Okay. Meeting. All right. Great. <laughs> okay. Looking forward to it. Uh, and then I just also wanted to mention I don't know how many of you regularly read the Gazette. If you don't, you should. One of the last times in America, I left with a local paper. Anyway, um, there was a wonderful article in there, I think last week, about a group of people in Montville who had started this kind of oral history project. And um, I was just checking it out. Um, as you probably know, the Montville people were very, um, Montville residents were very vocal in our preservation planning effort early on and concerned about the preservation of that neighborhood. And they uh, have Form this group and they have a website and it's it's great if you go on um there are many different uh, links that you can uh log into that would take you to some oral histories and there's great photography um the website is thebeltnorthampton.com and the belt i learned is the agricultural belt because this neighborhood um, is virtually in the agricultural belt down by the Maddox. so that's it all right uh, we're going to move on. Um, we do not have any minutes, so we will, move, we will um, bypass that on item on the agenda, and then we will move on to the public hearing. And this is a request for a local historic district certification of appropriateness pursuant to Section 195 of the Northampton Code for the proposed demolition of existing dormitory building on the Smith College campus. Uh, this is at 19 Round Hill Road, map ID 31B-169. And um, I believe we, we've looked at this before. And Charlie, do you want to say anything, Charlie? Or do you think the other reason? And just um, so everyone remembers, there are actually four buildings in the demolition project, but we're only reviewing one because there is one, the only one we're reviewing. There's only one within the local historic. All right. Um,
会这么做。对Um, all right, so I can read um, the what's in the staff report, or do people we've been through this before? So I don't know if we need to go through this again. Um, we had a long discussion about it at the meeting that when Charlie originally presented, and um, it's essentially removing the buildings and opening it up to green space. Uh, one question I had was I realized there are drywalls in that location, and I wondered if the demolition of the buildings and the site restoration would impact those at all. Right. Right. Anyone have any questions about this? I see you fine as you can do that. You can ask questions. <laughs> I believe we discussed that we didn't, uh, we didn't, we agreed that it was not historically significant. Um, and so the, the motion would be about removing the building for the plans of Smith to restore this big green space, which is great. Just the one building, because the others don't have Sorry, I'd move to allow uh, to um, allow the demolition of an existing dormitory building in 19 Round Hill Road, Map ID 31B-169. New discussion. All right. Um, so, so we need to. Uh, we're in first. It's going to be Oh it's my gosh. Right. Wow. Doing it. Right. Okay. So, uh, all in favor of taking down the building in 19 Round Hill and making a green space? Uh, yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. Great. Thanks. We'll look at when is that coming down? Great. Okay. All right. Okay, moving on. The next item on the agenda is um, a presentation from the facilities department regarding, or I should say, I have that in my brain because I'm working with another facilities department in another community, central services, <laughs> um, about the city hall exterior. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, I Yeah, and sometimes, and some, like well, in some entities, central services like is like purchasing a you know supplies, yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah, so that's why I don't think of you as that at all. I know that you're not that. Yeah. 
So to start over, my name is Pat McCarthy. I'm the Director of Central Services for the City of Northampton. And I have here with me tonight two architects from Deeds Architects, Kevin Reardon to my left and Sasha Morris across the table. Um, and the reason we're here tonight is just to make you aware and share information um, that uh, our department is working on regarding City Hall. Um, since uh, I would say the fall of 2022, our department has been focused on the exterior building envelopes of the Academy of Music, uh, Memorial Hall, as well as City Hall. Um, we've, um, Kevin um, Reardon has actually done um, plans and specifications for the exterior, um, kind of repairs for City Hall. Uh, every year we submit uh, capital improvement projects to the city for funding and we haven't uh, received approval yet, but um, I actually have uh, the work outlined in phases here. It's actually a $2 million project and because um, because of the available funding, we needed to phase it. So it's actually, we actually have, we have a paper I'll pass around. There's actually seven phases, um, all to be done, hopefully not separately, but maybe um, some together so that it wouldn't be seven years. <laughs> but um, we're here before you tonight uh, just to give you an overlay of what we've been working on. We, uh, of the seven phases we uh, expect funding to be approved capital funding to be approved hopefully next month for wood and stucco repair and painting on the exterior the phases i have here are masonry wood and stucco repair and painting concrete and stairs doors windows and other the turrets uh, the roof and there's also uh, asbestos in the attic above us. Uh, so uh, attic abatement uh, is the seventh phase. Um, so every year we put in our, I don't know if I'm skipping around, but I've, um, we put in a capital improvements and we've done that with City Hall. We asked for 325,000 for the exterior repairs for phase one for the wooden stucco repair and painting and um, we expect to have it approved. So um, there's actually two projects on this piece of, pa piece of paper that I'll pass it around and get an idea of the scope of work we're, we're looking to do. The Academy of Music is on there. You, on the bottom, you can just ignore that. Is anyone interested in the, in the historical sheets on this in the city hall? Are you talking um, about the beef farm? The I'm farm? not a historic person. The so inventory? I, think it's, I think it's within. It looks like the blue one. Sure. Okay. Thank you. So we're not making any changes or alterations to the existing structure. We're only repairing. We're only repairing as is. And the reason we're starting on the wood, um, I myself just thought it was the um, if there's going to be water penetration to the building envelope, I'm, I'm seeing evidence of that possibly happening around the wood trim. And especially around the front porch up on the second floor, a lot of the caps on the um, posts are missing. And I'm just, I'm thinking this is the most important phase. So I've asked Kevin and Sasha to be here tonight just to give a short presentation to give you an idea of the scope of work that we hope to do this summer. Um, Again, it's only wood and stucco for this for this particular phase, and um, I think that's about it. So I'd like to have um, Kevin and Sasha give a short PowerPoint uh, on what we're doing this year. And again, we're not changing anything. Uh, one of the things, well, one minor change is I think because of maintenance. The, at the top of the stairs, you'll see it's painted white. The stucco is painted white. So we do want to modify that color, but that's about the only thing we're changing. I asked Kevin today that maybe we should match that color for the side entrance wall. 
You can say kind of a pink color name. I'm not. But anyways, those are the only things we're really changing. Other than that, it's going to be put back as is. So, you know, who do we do? Do you think? Yeah, how do I start with those? You need to take a break. Okay, uh, my name is Kevin Reardon with Deeds and Company Architects. Uh, I've been working with Pat and the city on this for a couple of years now, trying to develop the um, the repair components for you know up upgrading the city hall. Um, uh, there's quite a bit to it, you know, working at it and trying to like maintain the the level of you know uh, of materials that are on the building and. You know, I'm not sure what the, you know, what the thought is as, as far as like preserving the existing wood. And maybe that's something that you can kind of give us some input on as well. Um, and also, you know, other approaches to how we're making the repairs. You know, obviously it's easier to replace materials, um, but, and, and especially when they're in really bad shape. Um, but maybe we can kind of once we start getting into the weeds here, we can kind of review those different pieces. <laughs> okay, yeah, as Pat was saying, so it's kind of gonna be a multi-phase project as a city can afford to do it and as grant funding becomes available. Um, you know, really, we're looking at stucco cleaning repair in this particular phase, uh, exterior wood repairs and painting, and retaining the front entrance and balcony walls. And, you know, you'll see the kind of the entire scope of what we're going to be painting and repairing um, once we get into that part of the presentation. Um, so phase one, wooden stucco repair. And then I've kind of listed out the other phases as well. I didn't include the asbestos abatement in that because it doesn't really have to do with the exterior. Um, but, you know, we have masonry and brownstone repointing repairs, concrete repairs. Um, the Craft Avenue Foundation has become exposed to, um, uh, and it was never intended to, but I think because the grade was kind of made steep there, that the grade has kind of been eroding away a bit. And the um, the stairs at the front and also at the rear of the of the building, um, doors and windows in another phase, turrets and roof and gutters. And at the end of the presentation, I kind of want to talk about the turrets and the roofing a little bit more, even though they're not part of this phase, just to kind of get your your thoughts on it um, about what we're thinking about for the different approaches of how to replace those uh, or repair those systems. So, um, I don't know if you want to take over now. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so this is what the typical drawing set would look like. These are all small notes that are keyed to a larger list. So, we just wanted to show um, what level of detail we're going to be getting into with the repair. So, this is a typical elevation sheet for the front entrance. Um, and this is calling out only the stucco and the wood repairs right now. 
um, we have a master file that has everything including uh, the turret repairs, the roof, masonry, everything ready. So this is it paired. We also have like photographic details of, of these different conditions so that, you know, and you'll see some of the photographs that we're including in this presentation that are noted with repairs specifically for each condition. Um, and we're just going to make our way around the building just to show you um, where we're going to be touching. We have um, the wood trim that goes around the entire building. This is this to show as well. Cracks in the stucco. Um, and yeah, this repairing of the wood and repainting and cleaning the stucco and filling with cracks when where needed. Which would come when you talk about the, the scalping around the E line. It is, yeah, it is the original film. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, the source of the decay is just age, moisture, all the above. Uh, yeah, both. I mean, it's. It, Seems to have been taken care of fairly well. They've, there appears to be pieces that are have been replaced. Huh. Um, the scalloping around um, the, the roof lines is like it's kind of like multi layer and also in mm -hmm. segments. And maybe you'll be able to see that when we bring yeah. up the photos. But you know you can repair some of them. And, and I think there was another renovation of the scallops that was done back in like the 1980s, maybe. Um, we had some drawings uh, uh, from a previous renovation where they had done some repairs also, but it doesn't look like it was substantial at that time, really, like similar to the scope of what we're going to be doing, you know, in this renovation. Yeah. Yeah, and I have a question because you were talking about whether the wood scalloping is original. I, I'm looking at the Form B and the, I've always, any picture I've ever seen of City Hall, it's stucco over brick. Has it been stucco from the very beginning? I mean, is that documented? Um, I don't know if everything I have is like from there and also from photographs we have. You know, you can, I don't know if you want to skip to that historic photograph. Oh, at the very end? Yeah. Yeah. We... I don't know if we have a date on this photo. Um, but yeah, here you can see the skeleton. Yeah. What appears to be stuff well. Yeah, because I've certainly no, I think I've never seen a picture of it just brick. Right. Yeah, you can kind of see in this one that they've added a gable onto the front of the building where above the entrance, where it used to be flat. And I think a lot of water used to shed down, you know, from that roof onto the, the porches below and the people coming up the stairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So now we have some photos to show you. Um, for the stucco repairs, most of them will be, as you can see, there are these cracks that have formed and have been previously filled out. Um, our plan is to um, remove, and trust me if I'm wrong, but remove the current fill and refill it um, with something that will hopefully last a bit longer, and we will try to be matching the stuff of color as best as we can. Um, this happens mostly, as you can see, kind of around the windows, and um, this also happens uh, near the bottom of the uh, stucco where water is being Um Uh, it also happens at connection points. Um, and this is a good example of those wood capitals on the balcony. Um, our approach is going to be save as much as we can and accept that we will need to rebuild instances like this where it is just not um, feasible to try to save this wood. 
um, our approach will be to rebuild this with um, a composite material that will match and we will paint it over and then we will be flashing it to prevent any further water than uh, getting in. Um, and the, the point of the composite is just slower deterioration at that point. So ASIC or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the idea is that we wouldn't be able to tell. Right. But, yeah. Um, we will also be making sure we can get at, uh, throughout the whole building at these seams here, apply uh, proper to make sure the water isn't getting behind the stucco. Mm -hmm. Here's a good detail of that scala thing. Um, yeah, our approach will be very similar. We will be scraping and sanding and making repairs as needed. Um, I believe these were the lines here of a possible previous repair that was made. <laughs> um, so our approach will be just to um, make repairs as needed, clean and and then repaint the color. Um, yeah. So this is an example of there are these metal finial details at the bottom where some of them are So we will be getting those fabricated and reinstalled. Um, continuing on, a lot of the work is going to be what I have already stated. There is chipping and water damage all along this underside of this ceiling here mm -hmm. and up along these columns. Um, our approach with the columns will be to preserve them as much as we can and try not to replace any boards as needed. Um, we won't know until we do an investigation the, the condition of the board, but we will be scraping all the paint and sanding um, and repainting the color. Um, this is another example of the capsule on the other side that has deteriorated to a point where we are going to replace it with a composite material in the plastic. Um, this also shows the difference of the white paint underneath the roof and at the stucco wall at the front entrance, um, where we will be proposing to paint to a color that matches kind of a lighter tone of stucco, so it can it won't appear as dirty over time, easier to repair. Um, as you can see, it collects a lot of dust and dirt in the wall. Uh, this is just another example. We will be uh, sanding and repainting the bottom of the ceiling. This is the ceiling above the balcony, um, as long as as well as repairing the wood scalloping from here and at these braces up here. We will be doing as well and cleaning the stucco and repairing it. Um, so this is our big, big change <laughs> that we're presenting. Um, it, this is a Photoshop image of showing the front entrance painted just as a, a little bit warmer color, but still lighter than the stucco to um, allow the windows in the spine of Northampton to show up a little bit. And you think that was the original color of the building? It's hard to say. We have the images that show the one we showed that looks like they're similar stucco color. Mm -hmm. um, it definitely feels like it is painted over stucco, which makes us assume it like the original. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We haven't done any kind of analysis. It is that planned. We hadn't been planning on it. We could do it. Um, 
I, I think it would have been stucco and it would have been painted white just to create a contrast. Um. Yeah, yeah, let's <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about the pink walls. Um so yeah, it's hard it's hard to tell what the pink color good. there is. Well, I, I won't I know this isn't part of the, the work at, at this phase, but I've always been curious about the trim on top of the column. But what is that? Is it I mean it I know that that wood isn't original, but it doesn't seem as though there had been a decoration there previously. What do we know about that? Yeah, the turret. Yeah. I have seen photos without those. The I think it was I think it was a Photoshop early. Oh, you think so? Yeah, I think it was always like uh, not something that people favored. Is like the scalloping and the details on top of the, mm -hmm. of the turrets. Mm -hmm. And so I think somebody did a rendering of it to see what it would look like without. That's a convincing rendering. Yeah, I thought for that. Cool. Well, you know, or it could have been, you know, somebody and they mm -hmm. took them off at some point and then put them back on. Yeah, the the uh, 1970s form B shows a shows the building without them. Mm -hmm. And it also has some, um, you can tell that the in, to that interior, the, the recessed part of the entrance is much lighter mm -hmm. than, than the rest of the building, at least above the, the balcony. But I mean, my recollection, I mean, a bunch of people who've lived here for a long time, but my recollection is they were, at one point, those crenellations about on the turrets were just really in bad shape, so they were taken down um, and then eventually replaced with, I, I don't know what they are now, whether they're just wood or whether they're not wood anymore. They're sheet metal just some, on yeah, metal just on wood that studs. Yeah, yeah, so um, it's not clear when they were removed. I you know, I just can't remember. Somebody watered them down, and I just think about it, and we had to replace them with what was there. So I think they fabricated these. You know, this is sheet metal kind of applied to a plywood and wood studs. And then it has this, uh, whatever this material could be copper, no, black, and it's pretty still contrasting. But if you, you know, looking at these from the, uh, from the drone footage that can be generously uh, to it, and you can kind of see that the plywood on the inside is in bad shape. It's got this kind of stone floor you know, for the turrets that, you know, the water kind of sheds off through the cracks underneath. Or between the underside of the wall and the top of the floor. And, uh, you know, it's a piece of paper. I'll look at the Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I'll look at the And there's no way to get up there. Like, there, there's no not like circular staircases no. or anything no. that no. you can't get up there other than with, uh, no. you know, scaffolding or. Okay. Very good. Yeah, so uh, um, I was going to kind of look at these a little bit with you just to get your thoughts on, like, this roof's in poor condition. Um, it's got rust spots kind of covered up by a coating. Yeah. Uh, uh, the metallic uh, coating. Blown off. Right. It's kind of coming off with the rust. It's And what kind of a roof is it? Is it an asphalt roof? It's a metal roof. It's a metal roof. Okay. It's there right now. Okay. Yeah. So we're, we're thinking about, you know, maybe a couple options for replacing one is obviously putting back a metal roof. Another one is to do a PVC roof that is like a membrane, and then they kind of attach strips uh, that look like standing tools, so you kind of get that similar look, um, but with much less cost. You would have to get standing to metal roof. Um, and I guess, you know, what are, you, what are your thoughts on that? So, you know, as long as we have achieved the appearance of the team, is that sufficient for the need to be more accurate as well? Yeah. I am, um, 
So have you looked at the second bit chart in terms of standards? I didn't. I, I did bring them with me, but I I wasn't, um, I didn't know what, what the content of your presentation was, so I didn't look at them pertaining to that. Um, so I guess I would want to look at these um, before I make determination, unless you, any of the other commissioners have had a chance to review these to um, see what you think. And if not, we should prefer the conversation, I think. Um, in regard to the roof, I know the city, so is there been any thought to be carbonized? Like, um, Thinking the carbon building more carbon neutral, so moving solar on the roof at all? Is that? I, I don't even know if it's an option. I just wonder that. Yeah, we haven't looked at it, you know, the structural condition of the roof to know whether that's feasible or not. Mm -hmm. um, can you explain what that um, is? Sorry, I don't know those initials, but you were talking about well, uh, uh, those uh, 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 So yeah, there's thoughts about it in the future, but right now it's too boring. Right, and you're wanting to stabilize it. I guess my question yeah. is, what you know, are the efforts that you're proposing here something that down the road could be adapted to the use of alternative energy? That's yeah, I mean, it may be fine. I mean, structurally, the solar, but we don't know what right. that would be. Yeah. So, you know that Memorial Hall in the back section of the structural engineering you look at it mm -hmm. in the front, mm -hmm. but the front of the house is moving so much more expensive. It's because of the train. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. So, kind of, we don't know. Mm -hmm. Do other people have comments? Questions? Uh, just to make some of the same kind of questions. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, ideally, you would ha you would have your historic research in place, right, while you're doing this um, investigation of the existing conditions. Um, but and Dylan's not here tonight. But it seems like every time we have this conversation, Dylan says, "Oh, there's stuff at the Forbes Library." You know? um, so you know, and uh, it doesn't sound like an HSR is just part of the scope of this project, but there's urgent building needs to be addressed. So I think we're in the position of like trying to do only the amount of historic research that's necessary to do the project that's best for the budget and fix the building. Yeah. Um, that said, though, it wouldn't surprise me if there's some stuff uh, that might be useful for decision making in terms of um, past projects, city, I mean, city buildings, there's probably lots of city records about how many times the roof has been changed or what the original materials were, or any of those kinds of things. Um, and then um, with that information in hand, then I think you're, you're dealing with standards and how to apply the, apply the standards. Um, you know, 1849 building, I guess probably had several different roofs on it over time. So, yeah, and maybe this is maybe we're looking at something that's only thirty or forty years old, and not not even older than that. Um, and then, you know, as Martha brings up, there's a whole challenge in the preservation world about rethinking um, some of our old practices with respect to energy efficiency um, and um, changing climate. So, you know, my guess would be there's quite a bit of flexibility here in terms of maintaining the historic appearance, but it's always good to know what was the historic appearance right um and and i think in this case that the would be interesting to find the earliest records um be thinking about uh sight lines from the street how the building is seen and then how that fits with the early records of the building so a few thoughts on combining historic research with uh, the budget of the project and um kind of changing standards within preservation thinking about energy efficiency
uh, to follow up on that, um, you had asked about material, you know, replacing the wood using a composite. And I, um, interestingly enough, um, <laughs> I designed the fence at the Emily Dickinson Museum. And when we put that up, um, there was a lot of discussion about the big piers that anchor the fence at the driveways. Um, there's a replica of what was there and um, whether we should alter the material at the base, at the base molding, because it comes in contact with soil. Um, now that property is a National Historic Landmark, so this, the Post Secretary of Interior Standards are very, very uh, taken very seriously and we have a lot of discussion about it. And we ended up um, using it because that using a composite material, I think, with this or something like that, we could paint, and um, it was a it was a good choice. So I'm all fa in favor of that um, myself, just because I had really an experience with it. But others may feel differently about it because it's not true to you know what what their well what we think may have been their original which is what we were thinking. We were thinking it would be worse. Uh, I know that somebody brought up PVC. It was one of the material options. So. And, and I just think PVC tends to be a good option. So, not mm -hmm. for a good permanent. Right. So, it would be wood. So, it's a matter of what type of wood. Well, wood or, or um, we're thinking wall, which is kind of like a pottery. We used ASEC on on the columns. I think it's, it's a composite that can be painted. Yeah, I think as far as the canvas goes, we're going to do something. Same thing as the most common of them is we use. Restoration is like a new house. Um, restoration is like a museum treatment, right? So you have a place like Emily Dickinson House, you might be thinking about restoring, but clearly this is a rehabilitation project. So be that section of the sector of interior standards, which allows you know more flexibility with the idea that the continuing use of the building and its um, function uh, and its relevance for the present day is the uh, motivation behind the project rather than going back to Museum like treatment of a like a original design, something like that. I I'd like to see instead of being not a full historic structure report, but to do a paint analysis of that recess, just so maybe you can gain some information to make to help make a decision on what color to paint it, mm -hmm. and um, also if possible when you're in the attic. To see if you can get um, a um, you know analysis or opinion as to whether or not you'd have to shore up that structure if you wanted to put um, solar panel on it, and I know your roof is like further down your phases, right. but just to again, but but I mean once you're because if you're in there, just take a look. I don't know how easy that is to determine, but um, it would help you then plan another phase to know right. oh. It's ready for for solar. Greg, do you have any questions or comments? Okay. Uh, if we can provide any more guidance, I would just recommend you take a look at these. They're online. Uh, the seconds I gave my copy, but um, they're very easily accessible online. Um, Sarah, probably could get you the link to them if you don't have them in the office, which you probably could. Um, the, the other resource that's really useful is that the National Park Service has a series of preservation briefs, which are on specific issues. So like there'll be one on masonry, there's one on wood, there's one on, um, uh, and there, and in my past past practice in the field, those were always like a go-to resource. They tend to be like maybe six to 10 pages with a lot of photographs. So it's not a lot of, and they're not technical as much as they're talking about best practices. So um, those can be, useful to look at and they just they're all categorized preservation brief and then they have a number when i was last working there was like 45 of them or something but they're they have a issue by issue kind of analysis so they're quite useful so just stepping back what's the process for 
so we we know that it's possible. Yeah. So so when we get it, what are we looking for? And we come back to the committee. Determine, and, yeah, we determine the color. We determine what color is yeah. there. Yeah. Because there could be layers, you know, and right. even if even if it's five layers of the same color, it, it gives you a sense. And sometimes the last layer, the one close to the building, is obviously going to tell you what the first color was. Um, I've never done this I don't before. think it's a complicated it's thing not. to do. You no. just get no. so a little bit like with a paint now, if you paint block. They they should, and I know because we went through this with the fence at the Demolition Dickens Museum. Everyone thought it was white because of the photographs; they're all black and white, and it was not white. It was like a you know time green color, which is what they would give you. Yeah, yeah, and in that case, they gave us I don't know four or five different choices, but it could have been within the range, and then we just decided. So it's fun. Yeah, haven't done it in a while. Have they? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um, maybe they were trying to melt those walls with that foundation. Could be. <laughs> uh, Lori Sanders, who's, who's on here, except she can't talk right now, uh, might be able to help you because I, I, I'm absolutely, I'm not positive about it. I imagine historic content has probably gone through paint analyses multiple times. <laughs> and we'll do more, we hope. And so I guess, you know, the project at hand, the one that we're that we're trying to get done this summer, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we're trying to we'll want to, uh, you know, repair the wood and repair the columns. Is there something that you, you, know, you said in this meeting that you want to see uh, other than the paint that you, you know, you want to see additional information or historic background on before we can move ahead with that? Because pretty much we're just, you know, kind of rehabilitating, like you were saying, what's there now for mm -hmm. the most part. Yeah. But how do people feel about that? Do you feel like you need to see more? Um, um, I don't think we need to see more. If you thought it would be helpful for you, you could talk to Dylan Gaffey, a member of this committee at, at Forbes Library, mm -hmm. because it might be useful to see, um, you know, some of them get trying at the earliest photographs, and again, the city must have records of other repairs, or maybe their you know profile drawings, or who knows what might be in archives somewhere. I don't know how much would be with City Hall, and how much would be important. Right, right. It's great to see these projects moving along. You know, I know it's a struggle to have. Yeah. But <laughs> right. Or if your website merges with a cell company. Minor. Answer that. Okay. Um. All right. Yes. Thank you. That was excellent. So the plan is to pull out the pain analysis. That would be great. Okay. Yeah. Now, would you suggest we do the paint analysis on the white as well as the black? Would you, are you are you going to be painting the whole exterior, or just that facade? Just the, with the, no, the inside. To me, it seems like I fit the wall in because I thought that color was odd, but basically the, the wall. It was the wall. The, yeah, yeah. That kind of made me think that's not going to fit in with whatever we do. Um, like to leave that there was the wall. Right. But I think the, the color what started that conversation is the white. Yeah. We didn't want to put them there. I can miss the connection. So we went. Well, thank you so much. Well, FYI, both Sasha and Wait, love to play the locals. All right. Um, the next item on the agenda is the proposed solar roof panel insulation. Um, and this is, we're reviewing this because we, this city holds a preservation restriction on this, the Shepherd Barn. And um, 
needs to um, review any changes. And we did review those. Maybe yeah. yeah, it was in, informally. Okay. Last time. Um, yeah. Thanks a lot, Sasha. Hi, Lori. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? I'm good. I, I will tell you, I, I would love to get microphones for all of you. Oh, because you couldn't hear a lot of it. It's hard to hear. Oh, dear. Okay. So that's just an FYI. No, that's but good. We'll register that with the finance department. Now I can hear you nicely, but it's... Because it's, it's like it's an inch from my, my mouth. <laughs> it, as, soon as, as soon as people are off mic, it's, it's, it's hard. But oh, anyway. Dear. Well, that's good feedback. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you very much for uh, having us tonight. Uh, since Betty and I were last with you, we we prepared a handful of slides. So um, if Sarah, if you want to upload those, and there are some more details that I sent in a letter. I'm not sure if you had time to review that, but um, once Sarah shares the screen, then... Um, you can ask any any questions. This is this system we have a currently a system um, that's a little over ten kilowatts on the Damon Education Center, which was the nineteen eighty six edition that was put on the yellow building. I'll just call it, um, and that supplies many of our electric much of our electrical needs. Um, <clears throat> and then this will be a, a smaller system um, to accommodate repairs to the slate roof. Um, but it will really, I think, help us move forward again toward becoming a completely carbon neutral, just, you know, like the city's goal, because the system on the back of the shepherd barn will not only supply all of our needs for our seasonal use of the shepherd barn, but the meter is in um, 66 Bridge Street, the, the shepherd house where Mass Humanities currently is, they're, they're gonna be vacating. But anyway, I just wanted to show you a series of slides so you have a sense of, of the building um, for those of you who may not have been here. So this is a, cl a close up view of the restored shepherd barn that we completed last year. And Sarah, if you can go to the next image, perhaps the most important image for this commission is this is the view from the street where you see the front of the building. And then another close up in the next image. Again, we had initially designed this um, where there would be a solar panel on this small L edition, but just in terms of the preservation of the building, it just, the we, we, we worked with uh, Northeast Solar, who was just, you know, they didn't push back at all. They understood our our um, goals for historic, the historic facade. So, so the um, array, if you go to the next image, will all be on the rear. On this, this is a new addition that we put on, uh, where you and this and where the arrow is directed is where the solar array will be located. And the final slide um, is an aerial view, which um, I hope, <laughs> it's it's cool because this is from Google Earth and it's was taken just last year during construction. And by that point, both the L edition and the rear edition where the solar panels are proposed um, were, were up. So, um, and you can see the configuration of the solar panels. So this is a 6.8 kilowatt system. And that's the conclusion of my slides. So um, um, as I, as we explained the previous time in, in, in the letter, um, a new, a new line, a new electrical line will be buried, but it will go along the same, um, you, we can end this unless people have questions. Does anyone have any questions about any of these images?
don't think so. Okay. And, and so we're going to just put put the new electrical line um, in that same already altered uh, path between the barn and and the shepherd house. And that work was done way back when Barbara might remember exactly, but it was when, like in the 1990s, when the barn was being, when they added a bathroom and it was a small gift shop. So um, it's easy for us to, to to trace exactly where that altered line is. So what, is there an empty conduit in that trench or will you have to put No, we're going to, we're going to put one in okay. because the um, current conduit is, is, well, doesn't have the capacity. Uh -huh. So that's why we'll put a new line in. Okay. And what's the anticipated, um, like, what is this going, to, what is the, so what are the solar panels going to um, offset? How much electricity is it going to give you for more than, obviously, than your needs in the barn? Yes, yeah, so it, I, you know, uh, so the way they, <laughs> Normally, the way you size a system is based on your electrical usage. In this case, it's based on what our square footprint, you know, our footprint is there for the backside of the barn, and you know, not not altering the slate. And um, so, you know, it's it's hard to say um, because the mass humanities is moving out soon, and what our next best use for the shepherd house is i don't know but um it's it's just moving us forward and this is all a, a donor has come forward and is uh, we're very fortunate so this is not on on our nickel so to speak um, and you'll own these panels it, we will lease just as our current system it, it we will lease we will lease the roof to this LLC for six years, at which point then they will give the system back to us. It it's a it's a really um, a strategy that has enabled them to essentially have kind of a revolving fund, getting some of the SREC credits to the LLC as well as us paying for the electric use uh, for those first six years, and then it's turned over to Historic Northampton. Um, and then forever on, it's it's our system, um, but it's enabled um, Fip and Adams LLC to install solar arrays on more than fifty the buildings of more than fifty nonprofits in our in the valley in Western Massachusetts. And, and remind me, I should know because I'm on the board now. But um, are they they're the same people that did the um, panels on the Damon Education Center? Correct. Thing. Correct. And I know that when the barn renovation was done, one tree was taken down, but this array two. doesn't look too, but there's no more tree removal for the system to be. Uh, no, no, absolutely not. No. And, you know, the advantage is, uh, as you probably are all aware, in the last five years, the efficiency of these panels has really increased. So what we put on in 2018 is... Uh, not as high functioning as these as this sm smaller array will be. And then it, I will just say that this project complements, um, as Martha knows, we have a proposal in to the CPA to do detailed work, uh, detailed study of the Parsons House. And as part of that, through another grant that we've applied for, is to really continue moving forward with all of our energy efficiency and figuring out how can historic Northampton meet our preservation mission um, and and move forward with these energy efficiency uh, improvements. So for instance, in another building, uh, we had someone come in and you know said, well, you could just spray foam the 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 roof or you know add, cellulose and and while another another um building in town recently was spray foamed that has its own carbon uh footprint and longevity but um you know it's not something we would like anyway so just working with some consultants to help us figure out what 
what are the ways that a historical society with um, four historic buildings can 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 move this forward. So maybe more than you need to know, but uh, it's part of a it's part of a larger goal that we have at at Historic Northampton. Steve or Greg, do you have uh, comments or questions for Laurie? No, very thorough and great graphics. It's like really easy to understand from a graphic presentation. So thank you for those. Okay, great. Thank you. Greg, do you have any questions? Yeah, so Lori, I just uh, also want to thank you. It's a great presentation. And um, I did actually, this is the reason why I brought the Secretary of the Interior Standards here to see how the, um, your, what you're proposing fits in. Um, they, it, and I, I uh, really appreciate your, I don't know whether you followed them or not, but I think that you very, very uh, nobly have um, tried to adhere to everything they recommend for alternative um, sources of energy. So that's great. Um, appreciate that. And the only question I had is this, is this about uh, visible from Graves Avenue? Yeah, it would be visible from Graves Avenue, but that roof line is is not steep. Wow. It's not like they'd be looking at the barn roof. Yeah. So, um, you know, someone on the second and third floor of of uh, some of those buildings on Graves would see it, but like other solar panels, it'll you know there'll be the dark panels and flat. So, um, I don't know, metal versus this hopefully not too um, aesthetically offensive or so. Well, it looks like they've done, if the pattern, the image that you showed is reflective of the pattern that they're going to use, it, it looks like they've done a really good job. It's exactly the design. Yeah, it's not, yeah, because sometimes you see on, them on these roofs and, um, yeah, they're very distracting because they're in some, you know, kind of disheveled arrangement. And it looks like they've nailed this, so that's great. Yeah, and I think by re by removing them from the L, it really it really changes things. Yeah, that would be tough putting them on. I mean, we, we... tough decision for us to go with that. So this is yeah. good. Yeah. Great. Good. Okay. Great. So um. To vote on this, Sarah, because of the preservation restrictions. Yes, so okay. we would uh, we would need a motion. vote to um, approve the request of the major changes of the preservation okay. restrictions or major alterations. Great. So would someone like to make a motion to do that? I'll make Steve? a motion. I move that we approve the request from Historic Northampton to um, undertake their solar panel project as a major alteration under the preservation restriction. Okay. Any more discussion? I think I have to excuse myself because I'm on the on board, the board for example, sure. so I can't vote on this. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. It's unanimous. Thanks, Lori. It's great to see okay. you. Okay. Thank you all so much. And um, if uh, Sarah, if Dietz needs, uh, we have had that painting analysis done fairly recently. So we have some suggestions and I have to step away, but I see what your next agenda item is. And I'd be very interested in um, learning more about that at, at another time with Sarah or whoever is uh, the proponent of that canal. Yeah, um, Lori, the application um, is quite lengthy and all the materials are on the city website, uh, I believe for today's meeting. We were, uh, so you probably could go on the agenda items for this meeting and uh, the historical commission and and um, look at it. So okay. the report, it's quite okay. very interesting. Yeah, I think. You okay, would... I, I, yeah, I can't wait. It's uh, it, there's just some really fa fabulous historical information, and I will send you all a um, a a an article, an excerpt from an article from I think it's 1887 or 1888. It's the Village Improvement Society. And and how hideous they think the city hall looks, and how they strongly recommend covering it with ivy. It's so funny. I had the mayor read it at an arts night out open mic event. It's, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I think you all get a kick out of it. It is a bit of an oddity, I think. It's very much so, yeah. <laughs> very much so. So, 
Okay. Well, thank you all so much for, for all your work. And um, I look forward for the, I'll, I'll look up that canal information. Have Great. a good night. Thanks. Thanks. Steve. Thanks a lot. Okay. Um, so the next item on the agenda is um, the National Register Historic, Register Historic District support for the Northampton New Haven Canal. And this is um, a report that was prepared by consultants um, in conjunction with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Um, and as we all know, this is a canal that extended from New Haven all the way up to the bend in the river in Northampton that we learned. And um, uh, so I, it sounds like what they're needing is some kind of a letter from us, Sarah, is that the? Yes, so uh, this was a project that was really spearheaded by uh, the Office of Planning and Sustainability. We started this maybe 15 years ago, did an initial study to figure out if um, National Register listing was possible. There have been other canals listed and other multi-state projects that are on the the National Register of Historic Places, but the documentation that was required at that point was really outside the realm of the city. We, you know, we were hoping just to list Northampton's piece and sort of kickstart it, um, but Mass Historic sent a clear message at that point that the only way to move it forward would, would be to have the entire resource documented. Um, so we sought and received CPA funds. Uh, SWCA put together this really comprehensive and fantastic report of both what's left and, and what's not. Um, there's not there's not a whole lot left of the canal, but it, it is visible in places. Um, Mass Historic is now considering whether there is enough here to move forward with a National Register nomination, um, and they indicated that support letters from the community would be helpful. Oh. Um, so I, I volunteered to take the lead on that and then send a template then to other communities. So we're also this time, uh, which was different from last time, really enthusiastically involved in the effort as well, and they also contributed to that work. Hey, um, I don't know if anyone had a chance to look at it. Um, do you have any questions for Sarah about it, about the city's involvement or the significance of the resource, um, the location? <laughs> Is there anything left in North <laughs> Um. Okay. Um, well, I, so I would, I don't know if we need to vote on this, but I would certainly put forward that I think we absolutely want to support this. Um, this is such a great, um, well, great community, community wide and also town, multi town effort. Uh, it's fantastic that you're communicating and working with the other towns along the canal. And I know I grew up on the Erie Canal in New York State. So, uh, I do, I, I'm astounded when I come across these other canals that were all built basically around the same time and how short a life they had, although the Erie Canal still does exist um, in a, a different, kind of a different, from its original form. So um, I know in New York, and I don't know if this is one of the goals of the project of the New Haven and Northampton, um, it's really been a great revenue generator for um, tourism. So many people have come to um, see it and learn about it, and the states really capitalize that from an economic standpoint. So, I would highly, you know, really support it for that reason as well. But anybody have any other thoughts that you'd like to Sarah to convey? Mass historical. They never get out here, so <laughs> we have to try to convince them that we're worthy of support. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's great. I mean, I, I think we should offer our full support. Um, and I, it's, did we look at a version of this report or is it the same report from about a year or so? Yeah, it's, it's, like it's the same one, but I, okay. So, so, so this technical report is being forwarded to MHC and, and then, uh, if it seems possible, then another consultant would sort of translate some of the existing conditions and historical documentation into a nomination form. Is yes, that how exactly. it works? Okay. Yeah. Because I was looking at it and I was thinking this is really interesting because it's, it's landscape, it's archaeology, it's infrastructure, it's history of engineering, um, you know, and so it seems like it could, could go a lot of different ways. And, and maybe in our letter, one of the things that we could highlight is those different 
dimensions of the project. I know sometimes in terms of qualifying a resource, you want to have a very specific story. We heard this a little bit with Florence um, and sort of that um, large district nomination. Um, but I think from the public's point of view and from our perspective, like those multiple ways of looking at it and thinking about it are, are really interesting. Um, so yeah, I'm in full support. Rebecca Barbara, do you echo? Oh, I, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. As I said, I haven't had a chance to really look through the report again, but um like to, you know, exactly what we're Okay. Great. Is that enough, Sarah? That yeah. information? That's perfect. Okay, great. All right. Um, any other business? I do have one question I forgot to ask you today, Sarah, by email about the preservation plan yeah. planning board meeting. Any update on that? So we're waiting for um, their associates to confirm, um, but that would be planned for May 9th. Like okay. Planning board likely will not have a forum for the preservation meeting, but I will definitely let you know. Okay. And those meetings are live. They are, uh, they're hybrid. So okay. they're primarily in person. Yeah. But if you want to come and speak in favor of it or something, it'd be better to come to the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I would definitely put this on my calendar. Um, Do you have a sense of how um, big the final document is going to be? 300 pages or 100 pages in, be in between those two okay somewhere and, i um there were just a few less edits to be made to see how many we made them but just one of the things so often i never even look like oh, that's right okay we'll get a copy when yeah. the planning goes yeah because i think with something of that yeah. like that length and of that um this much time that we've put into it to have you know a week or so at least to be able to mm -hmm. yeah. look through it would be yeah. i'd rather have the meeting come later you know and everyone have time to actually look through it because yeah. it's a it's been a big effort so. yeah thank you all right if there's nothing else um we will adjourn and we'll meet again at the end of april and michael will hopefully be here with us at that point which would be great Okay. Uh, do I want to entertain a motion to uh, I adjourn? I move that we adjourn. There is there something else? No, that's a second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye.